Hey everyone, and welcome to Comic Breakdown. Today, we are getting into the last issue released this week for Endless Winter, Part 6, The Teen Titans Special. Now, if you haven't been following this line, go ahead, check out my playlist. It's in the description. It's at the top of this video. You're going to go on and find out everything going on with this event. It's pretty much if, if Elsa from Frozen were infused with Kryptonian crystals. It's really the story you're getting in the most simplistic way of putting it. But it really does play out a lot of fun, and it's nice seeing the Teen Titans involved in this. So without further ado, let's dive into this issue. So diving into this one, like all the others, we pick up in 10th century Arctic Circle Greenland. And we have the Queen of the Amazons, the Viking Prince, and Black Adam all trying to take on the Frost King after Black Adam had made a, a sucker punch attack. But they learn very quickly that they are just outmatched. There is no way of defeating this guy. They're not going to win. And as all these ice monsters close in on his family and the Frost King unleashes a crazy amount of power, we see the ice split and his, his family fall through the glacier. Now picking up in present day with the Teen Titans at the Titans Tower. We have Crush surrounded by kids. Roundhouse sitting here playing with them. Kid Flash and Red Arrow cooking food for all the refugees from all over the city. Now doing their best to keep up with everything but running short on supplies. Just in time, we see the arrival of Donna Troy and Beast Boy. And they've come bearing medicine and food and supplies to help get through this ridiculous amount of snow. And as they're sitting around talking, you know, Kid Flash is really just disappointed he's in here essentially babysitting when everybody's out there doing the heavy lifting and they want to be out there doing their part as well. You know, Donna Troy and all of them are supposed to be training them and they're not getting trained. They're just on babysitting duty and they want to actually go out and do something. And then that's when Round Roundhouse says that there's, th there's, there's reports of people stranded on the Brooklyn Bridge surrounded by ice monsters. And it's not too far from them and they have the opportunity they could do some help. And this is where Donna Troy agrees and they head to the Brooklyn Bridge and the Teen Titans attack. And start just lay weighing at monsters left and right. And you could see this team, you know, even though they're not actually getting a lot of training right now, have great chemistry working together. And they all seem to be attracted, all these ice monsters, attracted to this giant spheric spiked ice ball. And Roundhouse melts it down and inside they see a, a young woman inside of it. And as she starts to wake up, she sends ice spikes hurling at the team, not realizing that it's actually for the giant ice monster behind them. And this is where our team, using their amazing chemistry, use a tanker and completely detonate this ice monster, leaving nothing but his feet. And they get Sleeping Beauty back to headquarters, and they find out that her name is Summer Zahid. She had been living in Brooklyn with her mother when all of this happened. She heard the, the broadcast from Roundhouse's social media that the Titans headquarters was a safe haven. And so she tried making her way through, but wasn't able to. She said the whole way that she could feel something building inside of her, like a scream that wanted to let out. Everything between that and waking up where she is with all of them. And then she has a power to create ice. No idea how she has that ability. And as her story comes to a close, we see the arrival of Cyborg, Starfire, and The Flash. And they're just coming to do a checkup on the Teen Titans and see how they're doing. And this is where Donna Troy tells The Flash that the Queen of the Amazons had told them a story about ice creatures, about ice monsters, about blizzards, an endless winter, and a king of winter. A story that she thought was once made up, but is now seeming like it's more of an actual tale that happened. And so with that, they get the idea to head to Themyscira and find out exactly what the heck is going on. And this is where we cut over to Themyscira and we see it completely covered in snow. And our queen of the Amazons standing with her warrior Amazonians ready to take on all the ice monsters that are at their gates. And this is when a boom tube opens up and Donna Troy and the Flash 
pop through, met by spears in their face. And that will be the end of this issue. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments. This was really us driving the plot forward. You know, Flash and Don Choi are now going to find out exactly what happened in the past. We're going to get a connection between past and, and present day. And we're going to understand who the Frost King is, what he's after, and how they're going to bring his reign to an end. Because as it stands, the Justice League has to find him. They can't keep running around doing everything they're doing, trying to save people. It's futile because at the end of the day, the storm is just getting worse and worse and the creatures aren't stopping. But that will be the end of Endless Winter for this week. We will be picking up next week. I'm sure there will be another issue. I have not checked the schedule yet. But if you have not checked out Dark Knight's Death Metal, Tales from the Dark Multiverse, crisis on infinite earths go check those out in my videos right now because i have them uploaded and they're freaking awesome be sure to check out my channel tomorrow because we will be covering all the marvel releases if you have not yet please be sure to subscribe to the channel like this video and until the next issue